This is a presentation from Intempco, a quality supplier of industrial and hygienic sensors. Today we are going to explain how a sensor uses a 4 to 20 milliamp current loop to indicate a measurement and how to troubleshoot these systems. 4 to 20 milliamp current loops are quite common in industrial and sanitary control systems. They are very resistant to ESD and changes in voltage. Hopefully this demonstration will show you why. For the purpose of this demonstration, we will be using an Intempco float level sensor. This sensor changes resistance with a change in float position. Attached to the, to the sensor head is a transmitter that converts that resistance into a 4 to 20 milliamp current signal. The transmitter uses a small amount of current from the loop to function, but since it's less than 4 milliamps, it has no effect on the total measurement. There are four connections from the sensor to the transmitter. There are top, bottom, signal, and shield. The connection locations and wire color are printed on the side of the transmitter. The transmitter is hooked up to a variable power supply with an ammeter in series with the circuit. We connect the positive of the supply to the positive input of the transmitter. That's into the loop positive input of the transmitter. We connect the output of the transmitter, the loop negative, to the input of the ammeter. We connect the negative of the ammeter to the negative of the supply in order to complete the circuit. We are starting with the power supply set to 24 volts and the sensor all the way at the bottom. As you can see, the current indicated is 4 milliamps. This indicates the float is at the bottom of the sensor span. If we move the float to the top position, you can see that the current changes to 20 milliamps. If we move to the middle position, you can see that the current indicates approximately 12 milliamps, which is halfway between 4 and 20 milliamps. We will keep the float at that position, and now I will change the voltage level on the power supply to 15 volts. Now notice while I change the voltage that the current does not change. These transmitters have an active processor in them that keeps the current level at the appropriate current despite changes in voltage. I'll repeat this because it's important. The processor uses some current from the current loop in order to function. This current is below the 4 milliamp level, so it does not interfere with the measurement signal. We will now break the loop and insert a 250 ohm resistor in series. With the circuit restored, you can see the ammeter is still indicating the same 12 milliamp current as it did before we inserted a resistor. The embedded processor will maintain the proper current despite changes in voltage or resistance in the circuit. A series resistor is sometimes used in order to convert the current signal into a voltage signal. If we put a voltmeter across the resistor, We can see that at the mid position it will show a voltage drop of 3 volts. We can calculate this by using the equation voltage is equal to current times resistance. So 12 milliamps or 0.012 amps times 250 ohms is equal to 3 volts. 
If we change the position of the float to the top, it will indicate 20 milliamps. You can see the voltage drop changes to 5 volts. So 20 milliamps, or 0 0.02 amps, times 250 ohms is equal to 5 volts. These are very convenient numbers to work with for the purpose of measurement. For the full span, we get a range of 1 to 5 volts from bottom to top. Now we will talk about failure modes for this type of transmitter. There are limits to how big a resistor you can use in a circuit like this. The embedded processor in the transmitter needs a certain amount of voltage overhead and current to function. If we drop the voltage supply level enough, now pay attention to the current, Eventually the processor will lose its ability to function and you'll get improper readings. For our transmitters, the maximum loop resistance can be calculated with the equation voltage supply minus 9 volts all divided by 20 milliamps. At our current supply voltage of 15 volts, that gives us a maximum resistance of 300 ohms. Since we are using a 250 ohm resistor, that is within spec at this point. Using this equation and working backwards, the minimum calculated voltage for a 250 ohm resistor would be 14 volts. I will now put the supply back to 15 volts. Just to show the effect of having too large a resistance, I will change the resistance to 500 ohms. You can see the transmitter is not able to function properly. In order for the transmitter to function with this resistance, I would have to raise the voltage level. I'll now restore the resistance to 250 ohms. Another possible failure scenario you may encounter is a bad sensor or sensor connection. I will remove one connection on the sensor head between the transmitter and the sensor in order to simulate this. This will show an open circuit condition on the sensor. As you can see, the signal fails low. Which direction it fails in depends on which wire becomes disconnected. It can fail either, either low or high. So these are the basics for a typical 4 to 20 milliamp sensor current loop. The same basics can be used for pressure, temperature, humidity, or any other 4 to 20 milliamp transmitter.